Thank you again for joining today's webinar. I will be discussing Glass Expansion's line of ICP spray chambers, their unique design features, spray chamber selection based upon ICP application, and lastly, proper maintenance procedures. In an effort to limit the length of my presentation and keep your attention, I have not included an overwhelming amount of application data. I will focus more so on the benefits of each spray chamber design and what application each design is well suited for. However, we have several application notes that detail the performance of each glass expansion spray chamber design. You will also find several instrument manufacturer application notes that feature a glass expansion spray chamber. We have made the glass expansion application notes listed here available as handouts, which you can access via the GoToWebinar control panel. We have several webinars which have been previously recorded and available now for on-demand viewing. All of these URLs can be found in the ICP Tips and Tricks webinar registration flyer, which also can be downloaded in the handout section of the GoToWebinar control panel. Now let's get started discussing ICP spray chambers. Glass Expansion revolutionized spray chamber design for the ICP OES and ICP MES analysts by introducing cyclonic spray chambers. Prior to the Glass Expansion Tracy cyclonic spray chamber, Scott style spray chambers were the standard option provided with your ICP. The design of Glass Expansion cyclonic spray chambers helps the ICP analysts achieve sensitivity gains, reduce washout times, reduce matrix effects not possible with other designs. An indented groove is built into the top of the spray chamber and serves as a barrier preventing solution from being swept into the torch. The position and depth of this groove are critical. Note that the walls of the spray chamber have a vertical region. This is important for proper aerosol generation and the effects transport efficiency to the torch. With our double pass cyclonic designs, the twister and twinabar, the knockout tube or baffle is cut at an angle and carefully positioned to maximize transport of the aerosol, but minimize or eliminate transport of large droplets to the plasma. The Helix CT fitting is carefully designed to fix the depth of penetration and the torque on the nebulizer seal so that the aerosol produced is optimal. All pumped cyclonic spray chambers include our UniFit connector and capillary for a smooth and efficient draining. Glass Expansion's new Helix CT locking screw with built-in torque control mechanism was released in 2018. This unique nebulizer interface allows for a consistent seal of the PTFE ferrule against the nebulizer, making it impossible to over-tighten or under-tighten while ensuring a gas-tight seal each and every time. The Helix CT interface is now the standard option with all Glass Expansion spray chamber designs. If consistent performance is crucial for your ICP laboratory, a glass expansion Helix CT spray chamber is your solution. ICP sensitivity is affected by both nebulizer depth within the spray chamber and the torque applied to the nebulizer seal. The data shown here highlights the effects of torque applied to the nebulizer seal versus the observed sensitivity. The applied torque was increased incrementally as the torque applied to the nebulizer seal is increased, the sensitivity decreased on average by 5%, with the greatest difference being 8% when looking at the copper 2 line. The new Helix CT locking screw is set to the optimum torque and will seal the PTFE press fit ferrule against the nebulizer to the same torque each day. The combination of the positive stop, which fixes the depth and the torque control, allows the ICP analyst to achieve the same nebulizer performance each and every day. There is also no need to worry about changing O-rings or nebulizers getting bonded to the O-rings. The replaceable seal of the Helix CT interface is made from PTFE, chemically inert and immune to strong acids and organic samples. Helping to prevent broken nebulizer also improves user safety in the laboratory. In addition to maintaining consistent performance, you also want to minimize washout time. Do not be fooled by other O-ring free spray chamber designs or those older O-ring interfaces. Glass Expansion's Helix CT is the truly the only zero dead volume interface available. Q 
curious why your washout times are so long? Do you have liquid pooling around the nebulizer seal? That is your issue. We aspirated a blue dye and filmed how long it took to rinse out of a non-glass expansion design. Well over 10 minutes before the blue dye rinsed out. The Helix CT is the only nebulizer spray chamber interface that significantly reduces the dead volume around the nebulizer seal. This unique design minimizes washout time with highly concentrated samples, reducing sample to sample carryover and improving sample throughput. The figure shown here compares the time required to wash out a 10 ppm molybdenum standard with the Helix CT interface and a brand X spray chamber with an O-ring interface. The results show that the Helix nebulizer interface and a 10 ppm standard can be washed out in as little as four seconds whereas brand X took 16 seconds. One can expect this time to significantly increase for more troublesome or sticky elements that are prone to carryover issues, which we'll talk about a little later today. The Helix CT nebulizer interface is also simple to use. In the next slide, we will show a short video clip that details how to properly install and remove your nebulizer with the Helix CT interface. Achieving consistent day-to-day -day analytical performance in your ICP laboratory is now just a click away. So let's get started using your new Helix CT Cyclonic Spray Chamber. The Helix CT interface consists of two parts, a constant torque locking screw and PTFE press fit ferrule. To assemble your Helix CT interface, push the PTFE press fit ferrule into the constant torque locking screw until it clicks into place. Next, install the CT locking screw into helix chamber by gently turning the knurled knob clockwise until it comes to a soft stop. If the helix CT ratchet mechanism has engaged, you've gone too far. Loosen an eighth of a turn by turning the helix CT counterclockwise. Next, you will fully insert the nebulizer to the end of its travel until the nebulizer sidearm comes into contact with the molded-in positive stop of the Helix CT interface. Now, hand-tighten the Helix CT locking screw by further turning the knurled knob of the Helix CT clockwise until the constant torque mechanism clicks, indicating a secure, gas-tight seal. Finally, check that the nebulizer is secure by gently pulling on the nebulizer. To remove the nebulizer, first loosen the Helix CT interface by turning the knurled knob of the Helix CT locking screw counterclockwise one quarter of a turn, then sliding the nebulizer straight out. The Helix CT interface is a consumable item that will need to be replaced over time. Now that we have detailed the unique features of glass expansion spray chambers, let's move on to the spray chamber selection guide. Glass Expansion offers a wide variety of spray chambers, each of which provides optimal results for all kinds of samples. Our glass and coarse spray chambers are available in four different configurations, the Tracy, Twister, Cinnabar, and Twinabar. We also offer inert hydrofluoric resistant spray chambers that are manufactured from PFA or PTFE. The inert product line is available in a Tracy and Twister design. We have two temperature controlled cyclonic spray chamber accessories, the Isomus XR and our Peltier Cooled Cyclonic or PCC kit. Both of these options can be configured with a spray chamber made of glass, quartz, or PFA. The Isomus XR offers the greatest temperature flexibility and best stability, while the PCC kit offers a temperature controlled cyclonic replacement for the Agilent ICP Mess product line. This basic selection guide walks the ICP analyst through a series of questions leading to the proper glass expansion spray chamber for a variety of aqueous sample types. Similarly, this guide summarizes the proper selection of a spray chamber based upon the type of organic solvent analyzed. We just wrapped up our petrochemical webinar, which is now available for on-demand viewing. That covered organic samples and solvents in great detail. If this is your industry, I suggest you take the time to view this great resource. 
In the next few slides, I will detail spray chamber selection process a bit further. The Twister Cyclonic Spray Chamber features a central transfer tube, often referred to as a baffle or a double pass cyclonic. This feature provides a smaller particle size and more narrow droplet distribution compared to our single pass cyclonic, the Tracy. While the Tracy provides a greater transport efficiency, leading to greater sensitivity. However, greater sensitivity is not always the best solution. Smaller droplet sizes reduce matrix effects and improve short-term precision, making the twister or a baffled cyclonic the most suitable choice for high matrix samples, and the PTFE twister most suitable for high matrix samples containing hydrofluoric acid. The reduced sample load helps to increase torch life, slow salt buildup at the injector tip, and decrease the frequency of cleaning ICPMS interface cones. The Cinnabar and Twinabar are the low volume 20 mil designs of the Tracy and Twister respectively. These low volume designs are recommended for faster washout when an uptake rate of 0.4 mils per minute or less is employed. Like the Tracy, the Cinnabar will provide slightly higher sensitivity, whereas the Twinabar, like the Twister, is more suitable for higher matrix samples. For sample digestions that require hydrofluoric acid, and or if the final sample matrix contains trace amounts of hydrofluoric acid, a glass or quartz ICP sample introduction system is not suitable. For these types of ICP analyses, an inert sample introduction system is required, consisting of a spray chamber and nebulizer made from various plastic materials. We offer inert spray chambers in two materials. PTFE is used for ICP OES applications, while due to its high purity, PFA is used for ICPMS applications. A common problem with inert spray chambers is that the polymer materials do not wet completely, and large droplets collect on the inside walls. The formation and collection of droplets degrades ICP performance, leading to erratic drainage, poor precision, and poor signal stability. A major breakthrough in the performance of inert spray chambers came with glass expansion's introduction of our proprietary steady flow surface treatment in 2006. The steady flow treatment improves the wettability of the surface, ensuring efficient drainage and delivering sensitivity and precision comparable to those achieved with a glass or quartz cyclonic spray chamber. Sandblasting of the plastic is a common surface treatment technique used to improve performance. However, that improvement still only provides about 50% of the sensitivity of what can be achieved with a glass or quartz cyclonic spray chamber. In comparison, the sensitivity of a stead flow treated PTFE spray chamber or PFA spray chamber is nearly equivalent to a glass spray chamber. For improved detection limits of arsenic, selenium, antimony, thallium, and mercury, in environmental samples, cold vapor hydride generation is an alternative sample introduction method that can provide an improvement in the sensitivity for these elements. However, switching between a cold vapor and conventional pneumatic nebulization setup adds complexity and reduces the productivity of the laboratory. In November of 2019, glass expansion reduced the hydromist spray chamber, providing an accessory that allows for simultaneous multi-element analysis by conventional pneumatic nebulization and cold vapor hydride generation. The design of the hydromist spray chamber is based upon glass expansion's industry standard cyclonic spray chamber, giving excellent sensitivity and short-term analytical precision with fast washout. The hydromist spray chamber features a secondary inlet port that mixes the aerosolized sample and liquid reductant inside the spray chamber for rapid conversion of the arsenic selenium, antimony, thallium, and mercury analytes into volatile hydride species. The unique drain design ensures fast, complete removal of waste from the spray chamber, eliminating excess hydrogen buildup that causes sample reflux, degrading analytical precision. The hydromist spray chamber can be operated in one of three different modes. 
The simple mold provides simultaneous hydride and pneumatic nebulization mode with five-fold improvement for detection limits of hydride-forming elements, while maintaining analytical performance for the non-hydride elements. With the addition of an extra sample input and T-piece, the hydromist provides a sensitive simultaneous cold vapor and pneumatic nebulization mode with more than tenfold improvements in detection limits for the cold vapor elements without compromising performance of the non-hydride forming elements. Finally, it can be used as a conventional cyclonic spray chamber with pneumatic nebulization. So far, we have discussed only those spray chambers that operate at room temperature. One consideration of these is that as the room temperature changes, so does that of the spray chamber, and that affects the transport efficiency and hence the sensitivity results in analytic. Another concern is that with specific sample matrices, particularly those which are very volatile, excessively load the plasma resulting in instability and in worst case, extinguish the plasma. For ICPMS applications, excessive oxide formation can result at room temperature, leading to isobaric interferences, which must be dealt with. In summary, a room temperature spray chamber affords little control over analyte transport to the torch. The ISOMES XR is a programmable temperature spray chamber that incorporates a cyclonic spray chamber, which is encapsulated in a conductive resin. The features of the ISOMES it can be programmed from minus 25 all the way up to 80 degrees Celsius in one degree temperature increments. It's able to maintain that temperature to within plus or minus 0.1 degrees Celsius. It features a compact design that is 100% self-contained, no external water lines. It incorporates Bluetooth technology for clean wireless control. It can also be connected by a USB cable. It's compatible with all ICP OES and ICPMS models. The time taken to pass below zero degrees Celsius from room temperature is less than 15 minutes. The benefits include the ability to analyze volatile organics, enhance sensitivity for limited volume samples, reduces isobaric oxide interferences, increases the chance of passing QC checks by maintaining a constant temperature, it also provides a record of the temperature for regulatory compliance and eliminating temperature drift. Each ISOMIST XR is customized for the particular make and model of ICP OES or ICPMS instruments for which it will be used. In some instances, the nebulizer will be on the left and on other on the right side of the accessory. The standard configuration includes a glass twister spray chamber, but the ISOMIST XR can be ordered with a Tracy spray chamber. And as mentioned earlier, the ISOMIS XR can be configured with either a glass, quartz, or P of A spray chamber. And if you want to use more than one type of spray chamber, that's no problem. They are completely interchangeable. The ISOMIS can also be supplied with a low volume twin bar spray chamber. But with this kit, it is not interchangeable with the other spray chamber designs. Some of the industries for whom a temperature controlled spray chamber would have the most value are listed here. Any laboratory that needs to analyze volatile solvents would benefit from the cooling capability of the Isomist XR. One interesting application is heating the spray chamber to reduce the viscosity of samples such as used engine oils or edible oils. In the precious metal business, the highest accuracy is desired. By eliminating or minimizing drift between calibrations, higher accuracy and hence higher profitability can be achieved. The temperature can also be optimized for the best sensitivity of a particular precious metal. When the best temperature flexibility or temperature stability is required, we recommend the ISOMIS XR programmable temperature spray chamber. However, for many ICPMS applications, a fixed temperature of around two degrees C is used and little flexibility is required. For these applications, we recommend the Peltier cooled cyclonic spray chamber for the Agilent ICPMS instruments. The PCC kit are based upon the spray chamber and Peltier system of the Isomist XR, but are coupled to the electronics and water cooling of the Agilent ICPMS. Therefore, Agilent users can get the benefit of a cyclonic spray chamber at an economical price. Of course, you can use a cyclonic spray chamber independent of a Peltier device, 
but as we just discussed, it is generally beneficial to cool the spray chamber when performing ICPMS measure measurements as it reduces the loading on the plasma. This has three benefits. First, there is more energy available to ionize the analytes as very little plasma energy is wasted during the desolvation and vaporization phases. Second, less water is being delivered to the plasma. Formation of oxides is minimized. And third, holding the spray chamber at a constant temperature results in better long-term stability and is not affected by temperature changes that may happen in the laboratory. The advantage of a cyclonic spray chamber over a Scott-style spray chamber is twofold. One advantage is faster washout. The cyclonic design has dramatically lower surface area and volume from which to remove the previous sample. The second advantage is more efficient removal of large droplets. Unlike a Scott style spray chamber, a cyclonic spray chamber uses centrifugal force to impact the large droplets on the spray chamber wall. On the next couple of slides, we'll see a comparison of these two spray chambers on the same instrument. Here we compared the washout efficiency of our PCC kit to a Scott style spray chamber. The same 200 ppb sample was aspirated until the signal stabilized. This was followed by the rinse solution. The timing began as soon as the rinse solution was introduced into the spray chamber. The starting signals for both spray chambers are noted at the top as they are off scale. The boron signal with the PCC kit started out three times higher than the Scott but achieves a washout time eight and a half times faster than the Scott and returned to a lower signal than the Scott. A second washout comparison was performed, this time using 100 ppb mercury solution. In this graph, you can see the mercury solution washed out nearly twice as fast with the PCC kit as it did with the Scott style spray chamber. The last portion of our talk will cover spray chamber maintenance. With your glass or quartz spray chamber, hydrofluoric acid should never be used. Do not sonicate the glass or quartz spray chamber and do not use a metal or ceramic brush to try to clean the surface. All these techniques will likely damage or break the spray chamber. For good measure, always start and end an analysis by nebulizing a mildly acidic blank solution followed by DI water. If performance degrades, washout issues or poor RSDs, and you are seeing droplets collected on the walls of the glass or coarse spray chamber, it's time to clean the spray chamber. First, try nebulizing a 2.5% Fluca RBS 25 solution for 15 minutes, followed by DI water. If this does not recover the performance, remove all fittings from the spray chamber and soak overnight in a container of 25% Fluca. Thoroughly rinse with DI water the next morning. Fluca RBS 25 is a laboratory grade glassware cleaner that glass expansion sells in a one liter concentrate bottle that we highly recommend to our customers and use ourselves in the R&D and QC lab. Last bit of advice, every glass expansion spray chamber has consumable parts. While the spray chamber itself will last a very long time with good care, the Helix CT seal and drain lines should be checked regularly and replaced when necessary. As mentioned previously, your glass expansion inert spray chamber is treated with our proprietary stead flow treatment process. In order to maintain optimum performance and prolong the lifetime of the treatment, do not use hydrogen peroxide and avoid making physical contact with the interior surface of the spray chamber. If the performance degrades, again, washout issues or poor RSD, it's time to clean your inert spray chamber. Same procedure applies with your inert spray chamber. First, try nebulizing a 2.5% Fluca RBS 25 solution for 15 minutes followed by dewater. If this does not recover the performance, remove all fittings from the spray chamber and soak overnight in a container of 25% Fluca. Thoroughly rinse with DI water the next morning. Eventually, the stead flow treatment may degrade to the point where it does not recover after soaking in Fluca. At this point, the spray chamber needs to be returned to glass expansion where the surface can be retreated for a nominal cost. Like the glass and coarse spray chambers, every glass expansion inert spray chamber has consumable parts. 
The Helix CT seal and drain line should be checked regularly and replaced when necessary. But the inert spray chambers also have an o-ring at the base cap that needs to be checked and replaced. If your spray chamber is leaking, do not over tighten. This will damage the spray chamber. It's more likely that the o-ring needs to be replaced. Thank you all for your time today. If you have any questions or are interested in a quote, you can contact one of our three offices directly. We also have a global distribution network that can be found on the Glass Expansion website.